Hello. Welcome to Jesus for All 2, God's Word, Your Daily Bread, the Bible, for November 6, 2024. Here, blessed and highly favored, we will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the Bread of Life. For our Lord and Savior in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 35, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. In the book, in verse 27, Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Here, we will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, with the goals to increase our faith. For Romans 10:17 reads, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, to please the Heavenly Father. Because Hebrews 11:6 reads, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. To walk in the abundant life that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, redeemed for us with his blood, death, and resurrection on the cross at Calvary. For the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 5 reads, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Further, the book of John, chapter 10, verse 9 reads, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Verse 11 I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And we know from Psalm 23, 1, that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Further, our goals are to do the works and the greater works that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, said we would do in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, 18, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Further, the book of John, chapter 15, verse 7 through 8, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. 8. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 30, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. The book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. In the book of Matthew, chapter 28, beginning at verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. 19. Go therefore. And make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. In the name of Jesus Christ, we will not do these works in our own strength, but the book of John, chapter 14, verse beginning at verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, 
for he dwells with you and will be in you. 18. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And verse 26 reads, But the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. And one of the things he said to us in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 19, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits, the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The book of John, chapter 63, chapter 6, verse 63 reads, It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. And so the words of life that we shall hear today. November 6 are Psalm 41, the Old Testament reading, the book of Joel, chapter 1 through chapter 3. The New Testament reading, the book of Mark. Today, chapter 2, verse 1 through chapter 3, verse 35. The psalm, the prayer focus, and the New Testament reading will be read from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982, by Thomas Nelson, Incorporated. The Old Testament reading will be read from the Amplified Version of the Bible, copyright 1954, 1958, 1962, 1964, 1965, and 1987 by the Lockman Foundation, used by permission, all rights reserved. I'd like to thank every listener of Jesus for All too. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and that you are receiving the grace to walk in those promises. I humbly ask that you share Jesus for All too with another, that you subscribe and give it the hand symbol indicating that it is acceptable in thy sight. And thank you for your support and any encouraging comments in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And now, Psalm 41. The theme of Psalm 41, a prayer for God's mercy when feeling sick or abandoned when we're sick or when everyone deserts us, God remains at our side. And it reads, Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Two, the Lord will preserve him and keep him alive and he will be blessed on the earth. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. Three, the Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. You will sustain him on his sick bed. Four, I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Five, my enemies speak evil of me. When will he die and his name perish? Six, and if he comes to see me, he speaks lies. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. When he goes out, he tells it. Verse 7. All who hate me whisper together against me. Against me they devise my hurt. 8. An evil disease, they say, clings to him. And now that he lies down, he will rise up no more. 9. Even my own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. 10. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me, and raise me up, that I may repay them. 11. By this I know that you are well pleased with me, because my enemy does not triumph over me. 12. As for me, you uphold me in my integrity, and set me before your face forever. Verse 13 and last. 
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ or every of us, the hearers. And now, the Old Testament reading, the book of Joel. The Lord God is the meaning of Joel's name. Although this name was common in the Old Testament, nothing is known about this prophet beyond the content of his book, which says only that he was the son of Peathol. Unlike other prophets, Joel does not use a dating formula to begin his prophecy. Because of this, scholars have disagreed on the date of Joel's ministry and the date when this book was put into writing. Suggested dates range from the 9th century to the 5th century BC. The traditional view that Joel was written about 830 BC seems to be preferred, since the nations and the conditions mentioned by Joel best match this period. Also, the prophet Amos indicates an awareness of Joel in his prophecies. The occasion of Joel's message was a severe locust plague, warning the people to turn to God in repentance. Joel announces that the day of the Lord is coming and will bring greater judgment. Before that judgment occurs, God will send his spirit, chapter 2, verse 28 to 32, to bring extended blessing. Peter points to a partial fulfillment of this message in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 16, on the day of Pentecost. Amen. And it reads, In the word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Peduel, Hear this, you aged men, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Has such a thing as this occurred in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? 3. Tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. 4. What the crawling locust left, the swarming locust has eaten, and what the swarming locust left, the hopping locust has eaten, and what the hopping locust left, the stripping locust has eaten. 5. Awake, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, all you drinkers of wine, because of the fresh, sweet juice of the grape, for it is cut off and removed from your mouth. 6. For a heathen and hostile nation of locusts, illustrative of a human foe, has invaded my land, mighty and without number. Its teeth are the teeth of a lion, and it has the jaw teeth of a lioness. Reference Revelations chapter 9, verse 7 through 8, 7. It has laid waste my vine, the symbol of God's people, and barked and broken my fig tree. It has made them completely bare and thrown them down. Their branches are made white. 6. Lament like a virgin bride, girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth who has died. 9. The meal or cereal offering and the drink offering are cut off. From the house of the Lord, the priest, the Lord's ministers, mourn. 10. The field is laid waste, the ground mourns, for the grain is destroyed, the new juice of the grape is dried up, the oil fails. 11. Be ashamed, all you tillers of the soil, wail, O you vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished. 12. The vine is dried up and the fig tree fails, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple or quince tree. Even all the trees of the field are withered, so that joy has withered and fled away from the sons of men. 13. Gird yourselves and lament, you priests, wail, you ministers of the altar. Come, lie all night in sackcloth, you ministers of my, Joel's God. For the cereal or meal offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. 14. Sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, and gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land in the house of the Lord your God, and cry to the Lord in penitent pleading. 15. Alas, for the day, for the day of the judgment of the Lord is at hand, and as a destructive tempest from the Almighty will it come. 16. It is not the food, chapter, verse 16. 
Is not the food cut off before your eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of our God? 17. The seed grain rots and shrivels under the clods. The garners are desolate and empty. The barns are in ruins because the grain has failed. 18. How the beasts groan. The herds of the cattle are perplexed and huddled together because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of sheep suffer punishment, are forsaken and made wretched. 19. O Lord, to you will I cry, for the fire has devoured the pastures, and foals of the field, and the wilderness, and flame has burned all the trees of the field. 20. Even the wild beasts of the field pant and cry to you, for the water brooks are dried up, and fire has consumed the pastures and foals of the wilderness and the plain. Chapter 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy mount, Zion. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the judgment of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. Verse 2. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick mist and darkness, like the morning dawn spread upon the mountains. Th so there comes a heathen hostile people, numerous and mighty, the like of which has never been before and shall not be again, even to the years of many generations. 3. A fire devours before them and behind them. A flame burns. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yes, and none has escaped the ravages of the devouring hordes. For their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like war horses and horsemen, so do they run. Five, like the noise of chariots on the tops of the mountains they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire devouring the stubble, like a mighty people set in battle array. Reference Revelations chapter 9 verse 7 and verse 9. 6. Before them the peoples are in anguish. All faces become pale. 7. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. They march each one straight ahead on his ways, and they do not break their ranks. 8. Neither does one thrust upon another. They walk every one in his path, and they burst through and upon the weapons. Yet... They are not wounded and do not change their course. 9. They leap upon the city. They run upon the wall. They climb upon and into the houses. They enter in at the windows like a thief. 10. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. Reference Revelations chapter 9, verse 2 to 4, and chapter 16, verse 14, 11. And the Lord utters his voice before his army, for his host is very great, and they are strong and powerful who execute God's word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can endure it? Reference Revelations chapter 6 verse 16 through 17. 12. Therefore also now, says the Lord, turn and keep on coming to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, until every hindrance is removed, and the broken fellowship is restored. 13. Rend your hearts and not your garments, and return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness, and he revokes his sentence of evil when his conditions are met. 14. Who knows but what he will turn, revoke your sentence of evil, and leave a blessing behind him, giving you the means with which to serve him, even a cereal or meal offering, and a drink offering for the Lord your God. 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Set apart a fast, a day of restraint and humility. Call a solemn assembly. Verse 16. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elderly people. Gather their children and the nursing infants. Let the bridegroom who is legally exempt from attending, go forth from his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. None is exempt from the humiliation. 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Have pity, and spare your people. 
O Lord, and give not your heritage to reproach, that the heathen nations should rule over them, or use a byword against them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? 18. Then was the Lord jealous for his land, and had pity on his people. Yes, the Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending you grain and juice of the grape, and oil, and you shall be satisfied with them, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen nations. 20. But I will remove far off from you the northern destroyer's army, and will drive it into a land barren and desolate, with its front toward the east eastern Dead Sea, and with its rear towards the western Mediterranean Sea, and its stench shall come up like that of a decaying mass of locusts, a symbol and forecast of the fate of the northern army in the final day of the Lord, and its foul odor shall come up because he has done great things. The Lord will have destroyed the invaders. 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Reference Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8 through 10. 22. Be not afraid, you wild beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness have sprung up and are green. The trees bear its fruit, and the fig tree and the vine yield their full strength. 23. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he gives you the former or early rain in just measure and in righteousness, and he causes to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain as before. 24. And the threshing floor shall be full of grain, and the vat shall overflow with juice of the grape and oil. Verse 25. And I will restore or replace for you the years that the locust has eaten, the hopping locust, the stripping locust, and the crawling locust, my great army, which I sent among you. Verse 26. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to shame. 27. And you shall know, understand, and realize that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is none else. My people shall never be put to shame. 28. And afterward I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. 20. Even upon the men servants and upon the maid servants, in those days will I pour out my spirit. 30. And I will show signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. 31. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Reference Matthew twenty four twenty nine and re- twenty nine through thirty and Revelations chapter six verse twelve to seventeen thirty two, and whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered and saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said. And among the remnant of survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. Reference Acts. 2, 17 through 21, and the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 13. Chapter 3. For behold, in, the, in those days and at that time, when I shall reverse the captivity and restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, too, I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And there will I deal with and execute judgment upon them for their treatment of my people and of my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and because they have divided my land. 3. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a harlot, and have sold a girl for juice of the grape, and have drunk it. 4. Yes, and what are you to me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the five small divisions of Philistia? Will you pay me back for something? Even if you pay me back swiftly and speedily, I will return your deed of retaliation upon your head. Verse 5. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples and palaces my precious treasures. 6. And have sold the children of Judah and the children of Jerusalem to the sons of the Greshens, that you may remove them far from their border. 
7. Behold, I will stir them up out of the place to which you have sold them, and will return your deed of retaliation upon your own head. 8. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the land of the children of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabians, to a nation far off, for the Lord has spoken it. 9. Proclaim this among the nations, prepare war, stir up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. 10. Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong, a warrior. 11. Hasten and come, all you nations round about, and assemble yourselves. There you, O Lord, will bring down your mighty ones, your warriors. 12. Let the nations bestir themselves and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the nations round about. 13. Put in the sickle, for the vintage harvest is ripe. Come, get down and tread the grapes. For the winepress is full, the vats overflow, for the wickedness of the peoples is great. Reference Mark 4.29 and Revelations chapter 14, verse 15 and verses 18 through 20. Verse 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Reference Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1 through 9. 15. The sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. 16. The Lord will thunder and roar from Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people, and a stronghold to the children of Israel. 17. So shall you know, understand, and realize that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion. My holy mountain, then shall Jerusalem be holy, and strangers and foreigners, not born into the family of God, shall no more pass through it. 18. And in that day the mountain shall drip with fresh juice of the grape, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the brooks and river beds of Judah shall flow with water, and a fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. 19. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, for their violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. 20. But Judah shall remain and be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. Verse 21 and last. And I will cleanse and hold as innocent their blood, and avenge it, blood which I have not cleansed, held innocent, and avenged, for the Lord dwells in Zion. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, are every of us the hearers. And now the New Testament reading the book of Mark chapter 2. And it reads, And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered, so that there was no longer room to receive them. not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. 3. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic, who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. 6. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. 7. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? 8. But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Verse 9. Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk? 10. 
But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, 11, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. 12, immediately he arose, took up the bed and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. 13. Then he went out again by the sea, and all the multitude came to him, and he taught them. 14. As he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. 15. Now it happened as he was dining in Levi's house, that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. Verse 16, And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and sinners, they said to his disciples, How is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? 17, When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. 18, The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were fasting. Then they came and said to him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. 19. And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. 20. But as the days will come, when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. 21. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old, and the tear is made worse. 22. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins. 23. Now it happened that he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? 25. But he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry, he and those with him? 26. How he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest, and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priest, and also gave some to those who were with him. 27. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. 28. Therefore the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Chapter 3. And he entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. Three, and he said to the man who had the withered hand, Step forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. Five, and when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored as whole as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and immediately plotted with the Herodians against him how they might destroy him. 7. But Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and the great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea. 8. And Jerusalem and Idumea, and beyond the Jordan, and those from Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they heard how many things he was doing, came to him. 9. So he told his disciples that a small boat should be kept ready for him, because of the multitude, lest they should crush him. 10. For he healed many, so that as many as had afflictions pressed about him to touch him. 11. And the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, fell down before him and cried out, saying, You are the Son of God. 12. But he sternly warned them that they should not make him known. 13. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. 14. Then he appointed twelve. And they might, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach. 15. And to have power to heal sickness, and to cast out demons. 
16 Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Bo Boanages, that is the sons of thunder. 18 Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, J Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, that is Simon, the Canaanite. Verse 19 And Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him, and they went into a house. 20. Then the multitude came together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. 21. But when his own people heard about this, they went out to lay hold of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. 22. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, and by the ruler of the demons he cast out demons. 23. So he called them to himself and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? 24. If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. 25. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. 26. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. 27. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless his, he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. 28. Assuredly, I say to you, all sins will be forgiven, the sons of men, and whatever blasphemes they may utter. 29. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is subject to eternal condemnation. 30. Because they said he has an unclean spirit. Verse 31. Then his brothers and his mother came. Standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. 32. And a multitude was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. 33. But he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brothers? 34. And he looked around in a circle at those who sat around him, and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. 35. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and my mother. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ or every of us, the hearers. And now our prayer focus, Psalm 25. And it reads, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. For show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindnesses, for they are from of old. 7. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to your mercy, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord. 8. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in the way. The humble he guides in justice, and the humble he teaches his way. 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. 11. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. 12. Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. 15. My eyes are ever, are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. 16. Turn yourself to me and have mercy on me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. 18. Look on my affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. 19. Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. 20. Keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in you. 21. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. For I wait on you. Verse 22 and last. 
Redeem Israel, O Lord, out of all their troubles. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, redeem every hearer of Jesus for all too, out of all our troubles, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we lift up our souls to you. We trust in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us not be ashamed. Thank you that you have not and will not allow our enemies to triumph over us, over our little ones, over our families, our brethren, our pastors, even over our church and the government of this nation. Thank you, Lord, that all things work for our good because we are the called. According to Romans 8, 28, as we continue to wait on you, show us your ways, O Lord, and teach us your paths. Lead us in your truth. Your word is truth. John 17, 17, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, forgive us our trespasses. In Jesus' name, let the new covenant of the Passover blood of Jesus be our portion. Both us, our little ones, our brethren, our pastors, and our church, bring us out of any distresses. Look on our enemies and deliver us. For you are our avenger, our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Lion of the tribe of Judah. Cause all our enemies throughout the rest of 2024 to flee from us seven ways. Let every enemy be at peace with us because of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, let do not let us be ashamed, for we put our trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve us, our families, our brethren, our pastors, and even the government. For we wait on you, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, redeem us out of all our troubles, because we are the redeemed of Jesus Christ. Thank you, O Lord, for Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Thank you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, for healing and delivering us from every destruction. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.